All right, beta. Uh, we have question number two for provision for doubtful debt. I am reading the question for you. On 29 February, that is end of the year, the remaining trade receivables were. Now, as you can see, the trade receivables have been divided into four categories based on the length of time they are taken to pay us. Okay. We have 18,000 worth of debt and it has been one month that the customer has not paid us the amount that was due. Okay. Then uh, there was the amount 12,200 for which uh, there is more, more than one month has been passed and less than three months. Then we have three to six months old debt worth 3300 and lastly we have debt of 2200 of which six months have been passed. Okay, so the provision for doubtful debt percentage is given 2%, 5%, 10% and 20%. Okay, on 1st March that is the start of the year the provision for doubtful debt account was 2050. This was the opening provision. Okay, so what we need to do we need to calculate the provision for doubtful debt on 29th of February. 2016 that is end of the year okay so how can we calculate the provision this question what we need to do we need to apply different percentages based on the length of time it has passed and the customer has not yet paid us the amount due okay so what we need to do better we need to apply 2% on the 18,000 okay so if we apply 2% on the 18,000 this becomes 360 I guess then the next data we have 12,200 what we need to do we need to apply 5% on this now as you can see as the time is passing by and the customer is getting late in their payments so therefore the doubt kept on increasing okay so doubt doubt is increasing 3300 times 10% and lastly we have how much debt 2200 applied 20% uh, on that now, if we add up all of these, we are left with a total doubt of 1740. So this is the provision and it is based on the length of time the customer is taking uh, to pay us. So as you can see, as the length of time increases, so our doubt would also be increased. Okay. Now what we need to do, we need to make a provision for doubtful debt account. Now we uh, studied in the previous lesson that the provision is a contra asset. Now, what is a contra asset? Contra asset is anything that reduces the value of our asset. Okay. So, the asset is debit in nature. So, whenever uh, our doubt increases, therefore, uh, this in return reduces our trade receivable. Okay. It reduces our asset. That is customer. Okay. So, the provision is always credit in nature. So, a balance brought down would always comes on the credit side. Now, as you can see in this question, the year ends on 29 February 2016. Now, after February, what comes 1st of March, okay? So, 1st March 2015 would be start of the year, okay? If the year is ending on February 16, then the year would start on March and obviously, it would be the last year, okay? Because on 1st March 2016, the new year would be start, okay? So, this is balance BD, that is... 2050 this is already given where it is given the opening balance now as you can see the first March 2015 the provision for doubtful debt account had a balance of 2050 this is the opening balance okay so if the opening provision is credit then the closing provision would be debit okay so the balance CD would be here now as you can see we have already calculated the provision at uh, at the end of the year that is 1740 if the opening provision is a 2050 closing would be 1740 now the entry that we need to make would be uh, now as you can see the provision that we had at the start of the year was 2050 now at the end of the, the year the provision has decreased to 1740 now what we need to do we need to take the difference between the two and that difference would be transferred to where to an income statement now, as you can see, the shorter side here is the debit side, okay? So, whichever the shorter side is, we need to transfer this to an income statement, okay? So, if the provision is decreasing, the provision account would be debited. Why? Because the provision is credit in nature because it's a contra asset, okay? So, whenever we are decreasing a provision, the provision account would be debited and we need to transfer it to where? To, uh, to income statement, okay? 
so this is basically uh income for the business this is this is basically basically gain for the business it is a profit for the business so the entry that we are going to make would be provision account would be debited and income statement would be created okay now this balance carried down at the end of the year would becomes balance brought down at the start of the next period okay after 29 february it would becomes first march again and this time it's not march 15 but it's a march 16 now so the new year would start on first march 2016 so the balance carried down would always becomes a balance brought down now as you can see uh, in a provision account balance bd always comes on the credit side no matter what happens and balance carried down would always comes on the debit side these two sides are fixed and again this balance brought down would always comes on the credit side now the only thing that changes in a provision account if the provision is increasing during the year let's suppose from 2050 this becomes 2100 for example let us suppose it's 2100 now the provision would increase by 50 then the income statement would comes on the credit side with the amount of 50 okay if the provision is increasing the income statement would come on the credit side and if the provision is decreasing the income statement would come on the debit side now you must remember uh, by this way that whichever is the shorter side the shorter side would be the income statement okay in a provision account so this is how we make a provision for doubtful debt account now let us see another question actually we are not doing the entire questions instead what i have done i have uh, made uh, extracts from the past paper questions and all of these uh, requirements are relating to the provision for doubtful debt okay so we are doing one uh, uh, topic again and again so that we can have some better understanding of the question okay in the question number three as you can see on first april that is the start of the year the balance on the provision account is given as 1900 now what we need to do we need to make a provision account now as you may be aware by this time that provision is always credit in nature why because it's a contra asset so whenever we write balance bd balance bd always comes on the credit side okay so the balance bd would comes on the credit side now as you can see we have a provision of 1900 so this is the balance bd so if the balance brought down is coming on the credit side then the balance cd would always comes on the debit side balance uh, bd would come on the debit side just give me a minute it's so the balance bd uh, carried down would comes on the debit side now have do we ha already have a provision or we need to calculate one now as you can see at the end of the year we have trade receivables of 31400 this means our customers owe us total of this amount and out of that 5% is basically doubtful so what we need to do we need to apply 5% on this trade receivables account at the end of the year in order to calculate provision okay so the balance cd would be 31400 multiplied by 5% and now we have a provision of 1570 now as you can see at the start of the year we had a provision of 1900 but this provision has been reduced to 1570 now if the provision is decreasing during the year it is basically a good news for the business okay it's good news for omar why because this provision is decreased so it's uh, something good for the business so now uh, we need to calculate the difference between the two and this difference needs to be transferred to where to an income statement okay so if the provision was increased then the provision needs to be created and if instead the provision is decreasing in this question it would be debited and we need to transfer it to where an income statement okay so whichever the shorter side is this is need to be transferred to an income statement this balance carried down would becomes balance brought down at the start of next period now we are done with this provision account let us move uh, further and let us do uh, one more exercise for this question number four with the name of zodwa now this is the igcse uh, past paper question zodwa uh, on 31st july zodwa decided to create a provision this means if we are creating the provision this is a uh, provision is being made the first time okay uh, and if the provision is being created then therefore it is an expense for the business explain that meaning of the term provision for doubtful debt provision for doubtful debt dear students it is basically the estimate of the bad debts that can be incurred in the future 
okay so the air recoverable deaths that are going to happen in the future we need to record it immediately and this is an estimate and this is known as a provision for doubtful debt it is an estimate of the amount which a business will lose okay we uh, haven't lost this amount yet but it is a doubt that it can be turned bad in the future okay we, we are unable to collect in a financial year due to a recovery so uh, uh, Irrecoverable is a debt that has already been turned bad and doubtful debt is basically the irrecoverable debts that can be turned bad in the near future. Okay, this is a doubtful debt. So just one way in which the amount of provision may be determined. Now how to calculate a provision? There are various ways of calculating a provision and let us see a few of them. First of all, we can calculate percentage of the total amount owing by credit customers. We have already uh, learned to those do this previously okay so the total amount of trade receivable that is we had uh, in this question previous question 31,400 and then we applied 5% of the, this total amount now what to do uh, next then what we need to do we need to estimate which individual customers will not pay their accounts uh, which individual customers will not pay their account uh, what we need to do we need to uh, calculate provision on debtor basis okay so let us suppose mr. a is not going to pay us so we need to apply provision for mr. a then uh, mr. B uh, maybe uh, uh, is uh, about to pay us so we do not need to make provision for mr. B then for mr. C so what we need to do we need to apply provision on uh, customer wise okay uh, data wise considering the length of time the dads have been outstanding so we did uh, in one of the previous questions that we applied uh, different percentages to different amount of debts and the debts uh, according to the length of time they have been outstanding okay now as you can see uh, the provision uh, uh, will be keep increasing as uh, long as the customer is not paying us the money okay the, the so the more length of time the customer is taking uh, the greater would be the percentage of doubtful debt okay so this is the method according to the length of time so in this question we just need to write one way and i am writing a few more uh, things uh, points uh, estimate based on experience okay experience of amount loss each year from bad debt so basically it is an estimate uh, according to the management that how much uh, debt would be turned bad in the future okay so in the next part that is part d we need to make an entry required to create a provision now as you can see if we are creating a provision uh, this is basically created the first time okay if we are creating a provision therefore it is an expense for the business so the entry would be income statement would be debited and a provision for doubtful debt account would be created okay income statement would be debited and a provision account would be created now uh, then what we have we have some accounting concepts uh, basically there are two concepts that are being applied on this provision for doubtful debt one of which is prudence now what is the prudence concept all right dear students uh, what is a prudence concept or matching concept uh, what are uh, accounting concepts basically accounting concepts are basically some set of rules that have been designed by international body global body and why are we uh, setting out these rules we are setting out these rules so that uh, whenever uh, any uh, company makes accounts so all of the companies make accounts in a similar way okay because it is a type of standard it is a method of making an account so there are some concepts that need to be followed by anyone okay whoever is making uh, proper accounts for their shareholders they need to apply these concepts okay so if these concepts are not being applied this means that accounts are not showing true and fair position of the business okay these concepts are necessary to ensure that the accounts are showing true and fair view okay first of all we have a prudence concept now what is the prudence concept prudence means uh, prudent means any approach that is very careful approach okay prudent approach it's a general word uh, uh, be prudent while doing this okay you have to remain prudent 
so prudent means you have to keep your eyes and ears open okay and you have to be very cautious and very careful when making accounts now what is exactly prudent says prudence concept basically says uh, two things first thing is that prudence concept says you must never overstate your profits and assets okay uh, let me repeat it for you prudence says you must never overstate your profits and assets means prudence should always ensure that the business shows their true picture okay the accounts reflect the true picture of the business and we do not need to exaggerate the position of the business okay so this is uh, known as prudence now let me connect you uh, this with the help of a uh, example now when we were young and we were small kids there were some kids in our school maybe and they keep on overstating some uh, things uh, what uh, they were uh, basically overstating first of all they were overstating their parents income okay if their parent is earning maybe hundred thousand so they would say that our parents are earning five hundred thousand why because they want to stand out of the crowd they want to demand respect from other students so therefore they were overstating the income of their parents and maybe they are overstating they were they kept overstating about their assets they kept bragging about their assets that we have so many cars and we have so many businesses okay so they were basically overstating their assets as well and why actually they were doing this they were doing this because they uh, wanted uh, other students to give uh, them some respect okay so similar is the case with some of the company's directors uh, when these small kids grew up and when they became the directors of the company they keep repeating their mistakes from the past okay the, now they are overstating the income of uh, not their parents actually now they are overstating the income of their businesses okay and the assets of the business so the prudence concept basically says that the the accounts the, should show the true picture of the business the account should not overstate what the profits and assets of the business okay so this is what prudence is about now how is this prudence concept being related to the maintaining of provision for doubtful debt basically it is connected uh, what happens my dear students when we are creating the provision first time or what happens if we are increasing the provision uh, it is basically an expense for the business okay whenever we are creating the provision the first time and whenever we already have a provision and we are increasing it further basically this uh, is increasing our expense now what happens if we stop charging provision for doubtful debt our expense will be understated and in return our profit will be overstated okay so what happens if the business do not record the provision this means uh, the profit will be overstated and uh, well, let us suppose our customers owe us hundred thousand and out of that ten thousand is basically uh, uh, provision for doubtful debt so actually we are going to get ninety thousand of that the total amount hundred thousand but what happens if we stop charging the provision we are assuming that the entire hundred thousand of the debt is actually recoverable which is obviously not true why because we are aware that out of the hundred thousand ten thousand is basically what it is a doubtful debt okay so if we stop charging provision we are basically overstating the assets okay so this is what the provision for doubtful debt is applied and this is how the uh, prudence is applied now how can we write this uh, we are ensuring by applying prudence that the profit for the year is not overstating and we are also ensuring that the trade receivables, that is current asset are also not overstated okay so applying prudence basically ensures that our profits and assets are not overstated and if it is being overstated therefore we are violating the prudence concept and what happens if we are violating this means our accounts are not showing true and fair view then in part f what about part f in part F, as you can see, state how Zodwa is applying principle of matching. Now, what is matching principle, by the way? 
matching concept my dear student states that the income and expense shall be matched for the same accounting period now by applying matching concept i do not mean that if there is an income of maybe 100000 the expenses should also be 100000 and if that's the case if the income and expenses of the same amount basically we do not have any profit okay so as you may be aware that the primary aim of any commercial business is to earn profit by applying matching uh, i do not mean that income and expense should be of the same amount so basically what i'm trying to do here i'm not trying to match the amount of income and expense instead i'm trying to match the timing of income and expense what does this mean actually this means if the income is being recorded in maybe 22 2022 then the expenses shall also be recorded in 22 okay so income and expenses shall be recorded in the same accounting period so this is basically what does a matching means okay now how is this matching or accrual principle is being applied when we are actually calculating provision now this is important uh, let me uh, explain with your help of a simple example now as you can see uh, the date today is 24th november now we are uh, here in 22 and it, it basically we are heading towards the end of 22 uh, what happens if we sold the goods in maybe november or december 22 okay uh, and the customer actually promised us to return this money and pay off his or her debt in 23 okay the sales or revenue is being made in 22 and the amount that will be actually received will be in 23 okay so if the, the uh, as you can see the matching principle is being violated why because the revenue is being booked in 22 and the expense for that is going to be recorded in 23 now what is basically the solution for this how can we make sure that the matching concept is not being violated uh, the thing is that if we have sold the goods in 22 and if the customer will pay us or will not pay us we will eventually going to find this out in 23 so uh, if the bad debt irrecoverable debt is being recorded in 23 and revenue is big booked in 22 this means the matching principle is being violated now what is the uh, solution for this how can we make sure that matching principle is not being violated uh, by creating the provision in 22 so what we need to do we need uh, do not need to wait for the actual irrecoverable debt that is is going to happen or will not going to happen in 23 instead we are going to record provision for doubtful debt in 22 okay so the provision is going to be booked in the same accounting period in which the revenue is being made okay so this will ensures that revenue and expenses are both are recorded in the same accounting period and matching principle is being followed okay let, let me write it how can we write this in the exam the sales for which a business is unlikely to be paid because we have a doubt are regarded as an expense of the year in which those sales are actually made so what does this uh, ensure this ensures that if we are here uh, right now in 22 and we we have sold the goods in 22 and maybe the customer will not pay in 23 and we are going to record the actual bad debt in 23 so therefore we do not need to wait for 23 instead we need to record a uh, uh, doubtful debt in 22 okay if the sales uh, revenue is being recorded in 2022 so as the provision okay both of the, these things should be recorded in the same accounting period so that the matching concept is being applied okay matching concept is being applied 